Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to build another quick and easy build for the model railroad. I'm not sure how many of these existed in the area that I model, but on a lot of small lines and uh, local industry areas, they had little milk houses or milk stops along the way where uh, farmers would bring their canned milk and set it on platform and then uh, the, tr the local switcher would bring cars by and set out empties and pick up milk cans so we're going to build a milk platform so stay tuned all right a milk platform uh, uh, you know, there were, were several of these on most railroads back in the steam days. This is how the farmers got their milk to markets. And, uh, you know, so we're going to just build one of these. I'm going to use it along a branch line or something along the model railroad eventually. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through the process on just how to build one of these real easy structures. In two or three evenings, this is just something small that can add detail and another stop for your local uh, switching train if, if, if you do uh, op sessions and that type of thing it gives you another place to stop a car and do some action on your on your model railroad so let's just jump into this and build a milk platform now, I don't really have any pictures of the milk platforms here I probably just could have done a Google search on the internet and found pictures of milk platforms but this drawing is into standard plans for the B&O railroad so I'm just going to use this and build them according to this and I go through my scrap box and just find, you know, four by fours, six by sixes, all the wood that I'm going to need is available in my scrap box rather than cutting up new wood. So I just found all this material for that. And I found this real thin piece of basswood that I can use for the walls and the decking and all that kind of thing. So once I've got my wood uh, set aside for me, I just come back and start putting all this together. And I have some uh, pre-cut 2x6s, so I come back and I cut all the deck, decking uh, support boards uh, according to that drawing. And I just start come and start gluing them together, you know, and I use my square to make sure I've got everything nice and square. And just start putting all the rafters together. I do the outside boards and then come back and add the center boards in. And then we have our supports for underneath all the decking and... Uh, you know everything's nice and square uh, this really won't be seen that much anyway so it wouldn't matter but you know then I cut out the uh, decking sheet and use an upside down knife to go ahead and score all the board lines in the top of this and then uh, just come back and glue that to the to the decking and basically we have a platform all put together at least the deck part of the platform it does have some supports that hold it up off the ground that we'll work on next but you know once this is painted and stained this will look really good and then we need to cut our four legs for holding this up off the ground and you know these in HO scale are about 12 by 12 which is a little over a kill according to the drawing but you know then there's two side boards that support all that decking board and I need to cut notches in the top of these four by fours to put those onto so you know I do that and then I come back and use my square and go ahead and get those mounted to those and then that's all the support that go underneath of all that decking and then we screw that to that and then uh, you know then all the decking boards will be supported on both the, all the long ends by wood underneath as they would have in real life now to keep these from spreading or getting uh, you know uh, get moving around and keep them all square they had all these uh, angle support boards on all the corners so I come back and cut those out of two by eights and just go ahead and add those to all the corners now the end ones are a little bit bigger than the original drawing calls for here but you know that's no big deal so that's a deck so we need to look at this and start coming back and doing all of the top of this and uh, you know I go ahead and find the 4 by 4s and 4 by 6s for the corner posts that go on this and these would have went down through the decking and bolted down underneath but I'm just going to glue them to the top 
and then I'm going to start with building the end walls of these. So I cut the wood that goes in between the 4x4s and go ahead and use the upside down knife and scribe wood into them. Now on the inside walls would have had 2x4s for support and you know I'm just gluing this uh, scale lumber to the inside of those walls and I come back and trim them flush with the outside of the walls and the one you know I cut these boards probably a little narrow on the one I got them wider on the second one but then once those walls are together we come back and glue them in between the four by fours and uh, that's the basic structure for the wall now I do use pre-cut one by sixes and one by fours and you know some of these boards need to be buffered out the four by four that I'm using on the top here isn't quite as wide as the boards that I used underneath so I'm gonna add a sideboard to each of these and buffer them out and then I cut the triangle pieces that go on top of that that form the roof and originally I cut these and glued them on and you know I, I've made a couple mistakes on this one and those were a little too small but we'll correct that here in a minute and then you know the thin wood is not as thick as the four befores and I need to make this a little thicker on the outside that I can put my batten boards on this so I come back and glue these two small panels to make this flush with the four befores on the outside wall and here I'm just coming back and cutting those roof supports again as wide as they should be. I just had them uh, too narrow the first time. I don't know what I did. Just, you know, just a, a mess up here. But then, uh, you know, the, those one befores, we're going to take this and buffer those four befores out at this point, like I had talked about. And then, uh, you know, with the side walls about done, we're going to go ahead and do the back wall. So I cut the wood piece for this back wall and go ahead and cut all the, you know, upside down line uh, boards in it with the knife upside down. And put these four two befores on the inside of it as well to match the ones on the end walls. And we glue all that into place. And then I come back with the tuba eights and go ahead and add those for the roof support on these two sides. The back one is already supported. And then, you know, for batten boards, I just use this scale one by three. It's probably just a bit bigger and a bit wider. Uh, the thickness is good, but the three inches wide is probably just a little wide. And I come back and mark every one foot on center and go ahead and add batten boards to all the walls that were exposed on the outside that uh, showed in the drawing. And then we're going to come back and cut the rafters for the roof. And you know, the front side is just a little more narrow in the back, so I had to cut some that are a little longer than the others and come back and add all those into place and glue them in and then you know we start adding some paint to the basic structure of this and uh, I don't have to paint up underneath of these when I get the roof on so I just went ahead and painted the whole structure and uh, you know now it's ready to go ahead and uh, add some roof before I did get the paint on it I went ahead and did this just kind of a on the turntable to give you a, you know a, a view of the exposed wood as it would have been before the paint went on it but uh, you know it's just it's a, the whole framework and the structure itself is good it's just this was you know an easy build coming together quick and the roof has plenty of supports underneath of it so I'm just using this real thin for sale sign plastic and just cutting both sides of the roof out and gluing them to the top of those rafters now this is a little lightweight so I couldn't really add weights to it so I just put some real easy clamps on it to clamp it into place and I'm just using this Christmas wrap tissue paper for roofing like I do on all the tar paper type of roofs of my building and I come back and cut the strips for these and then a thin one across the top which I ended up not using uh, what I did was something a little different but I went ahead and uh, you know glued these onto the roof and I just glued a three foot piece to make the ridge cap and come down and overlap the other pieces versus doing that real thin strip across the top and uh, you know I had some plastic uh, pre-made steps from another kit left over and they worked out to the right size for this so I had some styrene plates to either end and glued them on there and then you know you, you saw the building paint or the platform painted before but then I paint the stairs and I put some black paint on the roof to match that and it's all done 
Now, uh, you know, I do have a bunch of these Tichy milk cans, so I'm going to go ahead and clean the flashing and the plate and everything off of those and put some silver paint on them, and then I just glue a bunch of those back in the platform. And these normally wouldn't have set out in the front where the sun could get to them. They would have been set back in the platform, so that's what I did with these. And then, you know, threw it on a turntable so we could get this spin of what it looks like all finished. And, uh... You know, this just is a nice looking little structure that can be placed out in the middle of nowhere along the railroad. So there you have a small short video on how to build a milk platform. This is an easy structure for those of you out there that, uh, you know, are just wanting to cut your teeth and, and practice on something easy. This is not that complicated of a build. I mean, the plans were in the uh, general plan book uh, that was reproduced for the railroad. Uh, so this is just a standard plan that was out there that the railroad used in a lot of different areas and built them to this. Um, I'm not sure how many of these were actually in the area where I model. I don't have references to any of them, but there were some branch lines and small areas and there were some dairy farms in the area. So I imagine there was at least one of these somewhere in the area that I'm going to model. So, you know, I like doing obsessions and that type of thing. And this gives me another place just to stop a, a refrigerated car to uh, haul the milk out for the farmers. And then it would have dropped off empties back here for the farmers to take back to the farm and clean and put more milk in it and bring it back. Um, so it's just another sideline detail for a, a small branch line that would have been used back in the days that I model. So anyway, it's nice to get this one built and out there for you. It's a, it's a good one to cut your teeth on too. If, you, if you're wanting to scratch build something, just jump out on something small like this if you've never done anything like this before. Uh, it's not that complicated of a build. In any case, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to my channel down below and hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified when I have new material that comes out. Um, you know, I have a lot of odd stuff that I throw in from time to time. A lot of these quick builds this year. I know in the past I've done a lot of, of long-term builds, which took, you know, 20 episodes or more to build some of the buildings that I've been building. Uh, so these are easy ones out there for everybody. Uh, I hope you appreciate them. Share this with other people out there in the hobby. Uh, a lot of people don't know this material's out here and would like to know how to scratch build some structures and they would appreciate having you share this with them out there. Uh, you know, give me a thumbs up below the video. It helps my analytics and get my channel out there. Uh, you know, I have a lot of videos out there and a lot more coming out there, but I think my subscription rate is not up to 500 yet. I'd like to get it up there a little bit more than that. Maybe we'll have a contest at 500 and uh, you know give something away at that point in time so anyway uh, jump out there and scratch build some structures through this winter and uh, and uh, you know just play with your model trains enjoy the hobby it's uh, it's a great hobby there's a whole lot worse things you could be doing out there in the world um, so enjoy your trains and happy model railroading <laughs>